Hey guys, I want to show you something pretty scary, but do not hit the panic button. Anyway, welcome to the third episode, which is probably three, three too many, about Punkin, the Archtop guitar, which is a Harmony H1214. Now, before I show you the remnants of the accident that we just had, that those of you that are faithful viewers have watched the first two episodes in this playlist up here, the first in which we reviewed the patient and then built some tools that we're going to use in this episode. In the second episode, yeah, we took the neck off. So if you've never steamed the neck off of a guitar, you've seen other episodes where I've steamed the neck off a guitar, but never one where someone used tight bond instead of hide glue, and it was a nightmarish hell that I can save you from if, and only if you watch my episodes and waste your life doing so. So, let's take a quick look at what's left of the patient. Uh-oh. Lamps falling, bones falling. You know what? I'm not going to get up and start over, but look at this. You remember we called it pumpkin because it's all bowed up like a pumpkin body. It's fluted. And um, someone took the, uh, what do we call it, finish, and left it down to bare wood. And so that's why the thing got all bowed up and stuff. And I rescued it. It had already been through a neck reset that we discovered along the way. But if you look here, we had to clamp this after the neck was steamed off because it was, the top of it was literally coming off. But we have evidence that this guitar, I need to grab all my stuff because I'm ill prepared. At one point was one of those black guitars with a double white paint binding purfling who knows what it was but there it was right there and somebody took that off so now we had to dig into the neck drill out and steam and so the first thing that happens when you do that is the neck is going to want to separate the fingerboard and all that kind of stuff so we clamp that down so everything glued up under clamping now we're going to do and you heard that we put another crack in that thing right now i guarantee you but it doesn't matter because i'm going to fix it all because i am the plastic surgeon of guitars let's get the only thing left on the bench right now is chick flick teal pointer so let's go over there remember there's a playlist up there with all the episodes of this I guarantee you when this episode, when this playlist is over, you will need someone to pray for your covetous nature. Let's go. Okay, guys, we have our bean bags. There's literally velvet bags full of bags of beans. Uh, we're going to use those to cradle this body because it is an arch top. So, and actually an arch bottom. So what I want to do here is, believe this or not, we're going to take some chalk and we're going to mark up the areas of concern on this body and of course we're going to use nepotism runs rampant around here chick flick teal pointers distant cousin chick flick teal chalk so let's have a look here we've got this spot right up here the reason i'm using this chalk rather than a pencil or something is to kind of be able to get rid of all of this and wash it off with naphtha later. If you use a pencil or something, we're going to stain this. And the, the stain is going to pick up um, the wood grain to some extent. And we don't want it to be, um, to mess up the stain later any more than this pumpkin can be messed up. So this one's of concern because, yeah, see Chick Flick Teal Pointer, your cousin is taking over your role as a as a instructional aid. Anyway, this crack runs right here. 
and you can see that there's an offset and it stops about right there. This is a really bad spot for one of those splits because if something happens where this breaks off, not good. So we're going to want to reinforce this once we get the back off, we'll be able to see all of this. And we're going to take a look at what the grain does and want to probably want to put a cleat inside right in this area. Now, when we steamed off the neck, we found out, isn't it nice having a guitar body that you don't have to worry about the finish at all, that you can just mess it up because it's already as messed up as the muffler on that motorcycle, hear it? Yeah, somebody just found their manhood again. No, not like that, regular. Anyway, as we look here in this area, you can see that, where'd my chalk go? It's already trying to go, go to sleep on the job. The guitar used to be a black color and it had those phony white stripes that were you know, Art Deco, I'll, I'll try to find something here, but we've got here, this was actually coming off and up and was raised up and curled up, if you remember. So this area right here is a concern. Something that's not a problem, but it, show, it showed up in the grain as we've got some kind of flaw of a branch whorl or something here. There's one here. And... Um, I want you to pay attention here. This is sticking out right here. See that edge? And if it's sticking out there, that means it's got to be sucked in somewhere else. We've got a couple other parts of the body here. They're going to need a little bit of work. But for the most part, the sides are okay. But this is the big area. Now, since we steamed it a little bit, it is trying come down but you'll see on the inside there is a brace that goes right about here and the center of that brace it's basically more like a paint stirrer cut in half laid across this way, this way running this way so what happened is it cut loose in the middle but not on the edges so as it dried out it caused this to bow up like this and as soon as we cut that loose on the inside we're going to be able to do something with the back. Remember, I told you, you do not want to take the neck off of a guitar when the back is off of it because there will be an angle problem. But here's our areas of concern. We've got this, and you'll see that where that started, where this is sticking out, is starting to crack right there. You don't want that. And then the big splits here run from here to here, and then there's one coming here and there's one over here that there was glue but somebody glued this back from about here all the way to there and the glue held which is what caused this to crack rather than continue to come off the body would have likely raised up but we've got that um, this here one here and one here and the rest of it is pretty much okay okay the heroes of this part of the show are going to be this template tool um, chalk board on one side that is chick flick teal and a whiteboard that you can use dry erase markers we're going to need this here but not for a little bit we are going to need Granny's iron and Granny's iron holder. We're going to need the hobo hot plate. Ah, come on, guys. This is the second time you've fallen for this. My thumb is right here. How can. Okay, right? So, Granny's iron hobo hot plate. We've got a selection of palette knives that we're going to heat up. Look at this giant puppy. And then we've got some that are more practical because this one has been cut down so it doesn't get into the kerfing too much so when we heat things up we're going to see inside there's something called kerfing and i'm going to talk to you about that but we've got a series of artist palette knives some big some small some pointed some rounded 
So you're going to need the iron, the hot plate, the pallet knives, the form, and of course, you're going to need some Jesus when you die. You guys are falling for the same stuff over and over, please. Okay, so we've got the hobo hot plate secured, and we're going to start off by using these two pallet knives. We're going to put Grandma's iron up underneath there like so. You can't see it, trust me. And we're going to let those get heated up and are really hot. And then we are going to put the guitar body down and we're going to slowly but surely work around the areas that are loose. So it's loose all the way up to here. And then this area is going to be a problem. Somebody used yellow glue or something else in here. So if we can get this one to cut loose, okay. What we don't want is to force this where it starts to pressure and split because anywhere where a piece of this jumps out, it's going to crack in the future, especially if it's running along one of these radii waiting for pallet knives to heat up. Okay, a couple of things here. We've got these bean bags. So what I want to do is I want to adjust the one bean bag to where it's sitting in the waist of the guitar like this. And then I can put this other one on the back side here and lean the work towards me. Now you can see that there's an area where yellow glue has, or tight bond has worked out. Always watch for, for um, splinters to pop out at you. But you can take a razor blade um, it's got the reinforced top and put pieces of scotch tape to kind of give you a buffer so this will ride just above the wood here the thickness of the tape but if you've got glue globbed on and you're going to try to put a pallet knife in where the glue is globbed on you don't really want that you want to be able to start right and have access to where uh, that separation line is so this glue that's globbed up is going to cause it to hop all over the place And then the next thing you know, you're going to have a crack So you take a razor blade and you use it as a scraper and simply Annoy everyone that's listening to you But you scrape down to Where you can see that parting line Where the bottom met the top always keep these safe on a magnet somewhere and it's just taking this little pallet knife here. Again, I've cut this off. Once you see inside, you'll understand why this one is so short. But the action here is to let the glue hit, let it warm up, and then walk this forward, and then heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe. If you start here in splitting, you don't want that. That's the time you want to pull your pallet knife out maybe get another one. We don't want a big pallet knife like this one here right now because if I put that in here, it might be under a brace over here and it's working that loose and I don't want that. This one is really good for the head block and the tail block. In fact, I'm gonna get another couple of these and cut them down because they work great for the curfing. But again, this is just heat up. Make sure that line is accessible and just walk back and forth like this. You gotta take your time. Now, there's a spot right here. You can see that it has actually come all the way off the body. It's split from there to there. So this will come off by itself. So we wanna pay, at pay attention and manage that one properly. Let me catch up with you once I get a little further along. I want you to notice that we're getting very close to this point right here where this crack, all this whole section actually cracked off the rest of it. And so we want to pay attention to that spot right there as we approach that. Because that's going to be a problem later if we don't pay attention. And we're just letting it heat up. We're right at that critical spot right there. Heel and toe, heel and toe. We are by it. 
I want to show you, I made a couple of these gadgets here. These are the edges of the inside of a cigar box. Uh, they're uh, 90 on the corners. And then I just drilled a hole in it and, and beveled it, the end of it down and put two pieces of doweling in. And then that way, when I open up the back and the gap gets going, I can just pop one of these down in here, like so, and it keeps it open. You see that? And those gaps stop it from falling down. Again, we want to watch very carefully where that one piece is. But once they're babbled and you get this open, you can just walk this down as you go and as the back opens up it will stay open you can even turn it over once it's sufficiently open we didn't have all this glue on here and do that those work out pretty handy okay i just had a big breakthrough right there where that repair was made before there was so much glue that got into and on the curving inside the body it went in there for a ways but now we're going to start cooking with oil here i think because it's going to stay open a little bit better as we walk down the work. Okay, I want to show you a little trick now. As this is going to want to come off and separate, we're going to look at the face of the guitar. We're going to call this where the, where the F holes are. Let's look at this like a clock. This would be 12 o'clock. So this part right here would be about 2 o'clock. So I'm going to put a 2 here and a two here because we're gonna line up the body later. So once I get this off, I'm gonna, you see, I'm making a, a an arrow mark here and here. And I'm gonna go around and do that on a couple different spots on the body. So if that's two, this is four, four. It's gonna be a nightmare to, to to put this body back together, I guarantee you. And you'll see that in a minute. But now I'm coming up here. I'm just moving the bags around and again getting to where I can get to the work. Remember these knives are hot. Gotta keep them that way. So you're 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 working the glue. Let me see how this angle is working for you guys. It's not helping you if you can't see it. Because I'm here to help you make, not make the same kind of mistakes that I'm going to make, right? Again, if the work starts to slow down, heat up the palette knife. Okay, now when you get up near the head block, which is going to be about this area right here, this back of the guitar is going to be glued onto there, I guarantee you. So you may have to get like right up to that edge and walk up there. And then it's not going to cut loose. You're going to try to get it in here like so, and it's still going to be glued to this area. When you start trying to pull up and pry up and move your spacer down here, what's going to happen is it's going to want to split and crack right here. So this is where you get your bigger palette knife and get in there where you had that one. And then I'm just going to kind of walk. Remember, this is hot. Bingo. There we go. All right. Okay, let's take a look. We've got... H1213, this is not a 14, it's a 13. There's a mark that says UVC, I'm not sure what that means. There's a name here, it looks like it says Charlie, T-E-T-E. -T -E. I don't know if somebody wrote that in there in the factory, but I want you to notice here, this people is hide glue. You see that? It's brown. It ran all over the place. You can see on the kerfing. I better explain to you what kerfing is if you don't know. This is kerfing. It's wood that you can bend into a radius, like so. 
You can flip it upside down or right side up, you see here. And you bring it around, it'll curve to, a, to an edge. You see that there, like so. Well, when they put this stuff on in the factory, at the Harmony factory, this was not fine luthery. If you think this is going to give you Ken Parker level tonal quality ac across your uh, soundboard or top of the guitar, you're wrong. They just came in here, they slopped hide glue in, pressed it in there, held it for a minute, and boom, we're good to go. But I want you to notice this color. Now I want you to notice this color here. That is a yellowy, that's tight bond. And if you look here, somebody slopped tight bond all over this thing when it started to split. Up here, you can see the factory glue everywhere. But on the inside here, there's a split developing there. And of course, there's one over by the F hole that we need to pay attention to. Now I've talked to you about tone bars. Notice that there is no bracing running this way. So the grain is running this way. And unless you've got something running across here at intervals, it's prone to split. You remember, they put these and press these, steam press these. This was a flat piece of wood. And then they just stamped it and steamed it. So there's all kinds of contortion going on here that this wood didn't like. But tone bar setups, when I've told you, you can stick your finger in through the F hole and measure or take a piece of, well, you know, I just happen to have it here. You stick this in and go to there and see that mark right there. Then you come in from the top of the guitar when it's still on and hook it this way and mark it. And that's that mark. And you see that tone bar is that wide. You've seen me do that. Now, somebody actually carved these a little bit with a chisel and knocked them down here, here, and here, especially here, and then glued them in with hide glue. I don't see any gaps here that tell us that the tone bars are popping loose, so there's no rattle there. Um, I feel comfortable on these old guitars to put in a piece of bracing that matches the curvature of the arch top, which is kind of hard to do. I'll show you how to do that before we're done. But the kerfing here, you can tell, is broken up in spots where it cracked away from the body. This cannot be like this. I'm going to have to carefully remove these and patch in pieces that I have here. And I can just lay this in here and curve this around like so. Um, I have plenty that's a bigger sections where I can get these to lay in here like this as I need to. But I'll just cut this. I'm also going to take a piece of wood that's really long. I'll show you one here that it, it will kind of give you an idea. You take a, a flat piece of wood and you put 400 grit sandpaper on it. Now remember, I have marks on the side because it's going to be important I line these up. But once I get the kerfing fixed and everything, I'm going to need to go like this with something that will go across the whole body and get this level like so. There is a lot of work to do here. If somebody were to bring this to you and say, I want this work done, I would hope that this guitar had belonged to somebody really important because this is not worth the job. Now, let's take a look at the back of the guitar. Now, you remember, we had this all marked up where the cracks were, where they're likely to end. And what was really going on here that something had cut loose here and was causing this to bow up like that. Well, let's turn it over. You want to remember... When you're looking through the F holes here, you'd be looking down. So without a mirror, you would have not seen this number. The important numbers are right here. Let's flip this around where you can see it. This says S62. S62. Second half, they shut the factory down. Everybody took vacation at the same time. This wasn't... 15 uh, weeks of vacation after you've been there 
uh, six weeks. It wasn't like that back then. You worked, the factory shut down, everybody took off, you came back to work. This was made. So second half of 62, 1962 is right there. And you've got H12. We figured out it means 13. We would have labeled it 14. But look here. This popped loose. Somebody started to try and fix it. All this is tight bond. You can see in the factory where it wasn't tight, where, where it was tight, excuse me, where it was high glue because it cut loose freely for us. But over here where the tight bond is, it turned into a mess. There's going to be a lot of work. Now these bracings on the back of the guitar, they were just a thin piece of wood. This one here is cutting loose right there. Can you see that? There's an air gap there. Um, but this one right here, wicked gap right there. And if these stay together and hold down, they're going to pull the sides down and the center is going to pop up. That is why this is busted up. So to fix this, we are going to take this off. Isn't it funny how this split right at the edge right here? Uh, but we are going to take this off. Now, you can see that there are specks of some kind of glue here. I suspect it to be tight bond. You see that right there? That doesn't look like this or this. Somebody tried to squeeze some glue in there at one point and was unsuccessful. So we're going to heat this up. We're going to take this off. And then the ingenious part that I'm talking about while I'm here is... This matches this. Once we get the braces off, we're going to flip this upside down. We're going to take some clamps. Where are my clamps? I know where they're at. Anyway, we're going to go to the spots that are okay now. And we're going to clamp here, like so. We're going to inject some steam. And when this thing is more pliable, then we can clamp this stuff down and get this to shape back by clamping it to this. The center will come back up and then we'll reinforce this. All right, my friends, that right there is tight bond. Somebody squirted some tight bond in here. I mean, I don't know what else they would have done, but now it's time for me to spend a little bit more time with a hot knife and not jabbing myself with it. But once I get this off of here, you're gonna see that this arch top is gonna to wanna to become pliable again. And we're gonna take a little bit of my chick flick teal Chick flick teal magic cloth there and we're going to get this thing back in order. We'll do the Frankenstein orthopopic surgery stuff in the next episode. All right guys, I decided to end this episode here because going into the next part there's going to be a lot to it. It's really simple. I'm kind of been called the Captain Obvious mastermind because sometimes I come up with things that are just a little bit below obvious that everybody should have known, and that's going to be one of them you're going to see here. It's always very interesting to me to see what's on the inside of one of these guitars, how someone worked on it in the factory, and then, of course, somebody who picked one up at a yard sale and kind of gave up on it, took it to the next level for me to have to mess with it. You can see I put a lot of time into this one already, and that should be an indicator to you as to what their value is, even when you're done with them. You start putting pickups on them, changing binding, half of their value is gone, then be, they become part of a niche market where somebody has to enjoy your work. To give you a preview of the next episode with this big brace that was cut loose in the middle gone creating that bulge right there you can tell that this is arched 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to restore the concave there by pulling this down and managing to put this back together with steam. So that said, thanks for watching. Don't forget everything is up there uh, in a playlist link if you hover your mouse. And at the end of the episode, when the dark screen comes up, it will say playlist pumpkin junk pile. See you soon.